Hello, I welcome you to this course today. We are looking at um, GST 103, and the title of the course still remains Nigerian People and Culture. The course that helps, that want to expose you to knowledge of who are Nigerians, who, who is, what is Nigeria, who are Nigerians, and what are the peculiarities of the people that make up Nigeria. We have been looking at how Nigeria and Nigerians have been well spaced and dispersed across the length and breadth of the almost 100 million square meter uh, size of the country, how the most populous country, country the most populous continent, uh, black countries of the world have been uh, organized. We'll be looking at citizenship education. In our previous classes, we went through the people in the north, northern part of Nigeria, people in the southern part of Nigeria. We've looked at amalgamation, we've looked at colonialism under in this uh, in the process of discussing uh, this course. Knowing who Nigeria, Nigerian people are and their culture. We looked at the cultural areas of Nigeria, the cultural areas that defines the, the way of life of a people. We've looked at issues like culture shock. We've looked at how the different uh, generations of Nigerians have transmitted their values from one era to another. Having looked at amalgamation, for instance, how Nigeria came into being and the constitutional development that have taken place in Nigeria dating back to the first uh, uh, amalgamation, the document that was used to guide to, to, to rule Nigeria by the colonial master in 1914 as drafted by, by Lord Lugard, who was the first governor general of Nigeria. Up until the 1999 constitution, that have marked the, the current republic that we're into. I must uh, briefly tell you that Nigeria have had four, uh, is, is practicing its fourth republic, having the first one in 1963, that gave way, the republic ended in 1966 when the, when the military took over. And by the way, what's a republic? A republic is a civilian regime, a period of civilian rule. So without alteration, when there's an alteration, the civilian regime and, and that republic gives way. So in 19, between 1963 and 1966, Nigeria had its first, first republic. Between 1979 and 1985, Nigeria had its second republic before the coming of uh, President Muhammad Buhari. Then we have a brief uh, experiment of third republic. 1989-1993, where we had what we call the diarchy. We had two systems of government, having civilian in, the, in some tiers of government, like the local government and even some state, but the military head of state still remain, and they call themselves the president. Now, let's look at citizenship. We are now looking at Nigerians now. By citizenship, we are talking about who we, who we call Nigerian, who is a Nigerian, or how do you become a Nigerian. So citizenship refers to individuals that are legally recognized as members of a society. They are, member, they are legally recognized as members of society. So Nigerian citizenship and citizens are those that the laws of Nigeria recognize as members of Nigerian society, Nigerian states, to be specific now. So, as citizens, as Nigerians, who that would, I believe you are, in, a, in whatever way you must have acquired it, you are given rights and obligations. But before we look at rights and obligations, citizenship can be acquired in different means. One, by birth. Any person that, or anybody that his parent is a Nigerian, is by is paraventure a Nigerian. Usually they said either of the parents. But since we practice what you call patriarchy, whereby 
descent is traced to the father in, in, in Nigeria and in Africa in general. We look at those whose fathers are Nigerian, they are automatically Nigerian citizens. And those who are born by Nigerian parents, either in Nigeria or outside Nigeria, they are citizens of Nigeria. So they are by extension called Nigerians. Nigerians. The land is called Nigeria. Those who occupy the land are called Nigerian. So you are in Nigeria because you are from Nigeria. Did you get that? Good. Now, let's look at the way citizenship are acquired all everywhere in the world. One, by birth. I've explained that briefly. Those who are born by Nigerian parents or those who are born in Nigeria, you acquire citizenship by registration. Citizenship can be acquired by what? Registration. Where you go to the embassy, to the authority to register as a citizen. Fulfilling all the documentation, all the document, all the, uh, the requirement, the documents required for you to be registered as a citizen. Then you can acquire citizenship by naturalization. Naturalization. Naturalization process whereby an individual becomes a citizen of another place through residency decide to change your citizenship into Nigeria, uh, Nigerian citizenship. So you can acquire citizenship by nationalization and you can acquire citizenship by honorary. We have honorary citizenship. You can be honored to be a citizen of Nigeria. That means the Nigerian government can decide to honor, to, to to give citizenship right and power to another individual who is not a citizen by birth, by registration, or by naturalization. So the president of Nigeria can honor an individual and pronounce the person a citizen of Nigeria, thereby giving the person the rights and privileges that accrue to individuals who are called citizens. What are the rights? and obligations of citizens. As Nigerian, the laws give you rights. The laws that create Nigeria gives you rights to enjoy. And these rights are divided into groups. We have those that are inalienable. You came with those rights by virtue of being human. They are called fundamental human rights. Fundamental in the sense that by virtue of being a human being, you enjoy such rights. For instance, when the child is born, it is the right of the child to cry. Isn't it? So that signifies a natural right of expression. You have the right to express yourself as Nigerians. It is fundamental. It is your right. This, by virtue of being a Nigerian, by virtue of being a human being, that right is fundamental. It is given to you by nature. You have the right to move. Freedom of movement, you are free to move, although if there is restriction in some areas or the authorities can decide to regulate re uh, movement in certain areas. But as a citizen, you have the right to move. Freedom of movement, it is fundamental. Right to association, because as, at the time you were born, you were born to a family. So there's an association. So naturally, and as human being, you are a social being. You are a social and a social being. So being a social being, you have the right to associate freedom. As in, as Nigerians, you have the right to associate, although not with clandestine groups. You don't have the right to become a member of secret society. You don't have the right to become a member of an armed robbery gang or a kidnapper squad. No. Damn, you have freedom of movement, freedom of expression, right to own private property, right to to to, to get legal uh, uh, redress where you are being accused. In fact, you have the right, you are as a political right now, you have the right to vote and be voted for if you are an adult and you register, you meet the requirement of the law. 
it is your right to vote in an election. So, looking at all these rights, rights are what the state, for instance, gives the citizens. What the state gives the citizen, that is, by virtue of being a citizen, either by birth, by registration, by naturalization, by or by honorary. You have the right to enjoy this. You can ask the state for it if it is being denied. You have the right to pursue your ambition to do it legitimately. You have the right to be whosoever you want to be legally as a citizen. What are the, for every right, they say there's an obligation. For everything that you enjoy, there is an obligation as a citizen of Nigeria. The first obligation that is required of you as Nigerian is you must be ready to defend Nigeria. You must be ready to defend Nigeria. When the need arises, you must be ready to. So you have to be what? The obligation is to be patriotic. Patriotism. Patriotism. The feeling of being protective of your national uh, heritage. You should have that zeal of being a Nigerian so as to defend the integrity of Nigeria anywhere you find yourself. You are expected to obey laws and order. Rules and regulations by, put in place by the state, by the government. When I mean the state, we are referring to the government now. In this course, when you hear state and government, they are the same. We are talking about those, the constituted authority. So you have, the, you are, it is obliged for you to pay your tax. As a taxable adult, you are to pay your tax. You do business, any form of tax. At, at whatever level, at that tenement rate, at that your bills you have, it is your ob obligation to pay your tax. You have, you are obliged to respect the constituted authority. For instance, as a citizen of Nigeria, whenever the national anthem is being recited, what you are supposed to do is to stand at attention. It is a honor that you are doing to your country because you are a citizen of Nigeria either by birth, by registration, by naturalization, or by honorary. So you are obliged to stand at attention while the national, uh, national attempt is being recited. You are to protect the national symbols of Nigeria. And what are these symbols? The national symbols of Nigeria include a coat of arms, coat of arms, it includes the national flag, the national flag. It includes our currency, which is very important, I must emphasize. We must respect the national uh, items like the currency. You don't mutilate the currency, you don't write on it, you don't turn the Nigerian Naira and Kobo to your writing pad where you keep, or your diary, where you keep your you write your records on it. It is disrespecting the national symbol. These are national symbols. The national symbols, we talk, when you see the Nigerian coat of arms, for instance, anywhere in the world it is unique. It is reserved for Nigeria. There is no country that is having the same coat of arm. Neither do you have any country using having the same flag. The Nigerian flag is divided into three in two colors. Green, white, and green. Agriculture, peace are the main interpretation of the, 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 the colors on the Nigerian flag. Then the currency, you have to respect the Nigerian currency. Nigeria is the only country in the world that spends Naira and Kobo. So anywhere you see you hear Naira or you see Naira in, it, in all its denomination, you will see it. It is, it is the symbol of Nigeria. These are many more are the 
national symbols of Nigeria that you are expected to hold in high esteem. You respect the Nigerian constitution. You respect the Nigerian constitution and the, its provision. You respect the national constitution and its provision. And in the event that your rights are denied as Nigerians, when your rights are violated, what you do is to use the instrumentality of the law, which is the constitution that we have discussed in our previous session, as a legal document that binds the affairs of a state, either written or not written. Now, you have to use the instrumentality of the constitution to get your rights if it is being denied or violated. However, as fundamental as these rights are, there are instances that as citizens you may be denied of those rights. In another, another fundamental uh, obligation that is required of you as a citizen is to vote in an election or observe National Day. In our national days, we have Democracy Day. Is it? It has been shifted, moved from May 29 to June 12. Now we have the Independence Day, October 1st. This national days must be respected. We must be. We must observe it as citizens. Now, if you don't carry out your obligation as required by the law. Your rights may be denied as a citizen. That's why, as, as fundamental as the right to move is, prisoners does not they don't have rights. Prisoners don't have right to move as they want because they have broken the law. The right they, they, they have you have to respect as this obligated is obligated of you now to respect others. In as much as you have your right, others also have their rights. So you have to respect their rights. Whatever means to violate another person's right as a citizen of Nigeria, your right to can be denied or violated by the authority. So you can see, you see instances whereby some in Nigeria is being killed. You have the right to life. It's fundamental. Your life is sacred. You have the right to life. Because when you were born as being, as human beings, you came with it. You came with life. That's why we are even recognized today as a Nigerian. But as sacred and as fundamental as right to life is, a right to life can also be violated, can be denied. To can deny a citizen his life if he or she have not played its own part, which is obligatory of him not to break the law. For instance, if you decide to kill, the law can deny you of your right to, of your right to life. You, the law can sentence you to lie to, to death if you kill someone in whatever form, either murder or homicide, whatever form the killing may be, depending on the what the way this constitution the, through the judiciary has been interpreted on that matter. So in all, as as Nigerians, you are a citizen, as a Nigerian, you are a citizen because you are either a Nigerian by birth. Or you are in Nigeria by registration, or by extension you can be become a Nigerian by naturalization or by honorary. In whatever form, although all these rights, all these uh, forms of citizenship have their limitation, the most fundamental citizenship that Nigerian condition gives uh, a provenance to is citizenship by birth. With this, you have the right to enjoy. Anything that is worth enjoying in Nigeria. You can aspire to be Nigeria president only if you are a citizen by birth. The other three cannot give cannot guarantee your, your, your ambition to become president. Everyone is a Nigerian who is born by in Nigeria. Or registered as Nigeria, or naturalized as Nigeria, or by extension honored by the government, especially by the president, pronounced by the president as being citizen of Nigeria. With this, you will know that 
the Nigerian economic resources belong to who? Nigerians. The Nigerian wealth belong to Nigerians. So in conclusion, you know your rights as a citizen and you have been told your obligation. This course expects you to remain a patriotic Nigerian. Until I see you next session, I am Lushe Thank you.